Marie Franklin, who certain students on this stage have called me Professor Mom before. And I feel like a mother um, inviting her graduates to come back. And I'm just so incredibly proud of this group of alum. So I'd like to introduce you to them. And then I'm going to introduce you to three students in the Journalism 2 class who have helped write the questions. And this is their debut as um, reporters, broadcast reporters. I'm really proud of them as well. So we'll start with, let's see, uh, I'll call the alum's name, ask them to stand up, and then they're going to come back and give you one minute on what they do presently. So in alphabetical order, we start with Matt Arias, class of 2014. And Matt is now working for WBZ News and also Magic Radio 106.7. And then we have Christina Kaufman. Christina's the class of 2015, so she just graduated last year. And she's now working at Sprague Nelson Advertising in Boston, Mass. And next to Christina is Natalie Kafori, class of 15, who's working in uh, the development field for the Ellie Fund. And we have Ryan McLeod, class of 2015 as well. And Ryan is in the sales trainee program at Gatehouse Media. Ashley Medeiros, also from the class of 2015. And Ashley's working in public relations at Next Steps Communication. And Brianna Robbins, also class of 2015, is working in the development area at Malden Catholic High School. And last but not least, and I know that's a cliche, we have Ariana St. Pierre, class of 14, and she's a digital media content producer for WGME CBS News in Portland, Maine. Excellent. A round of applause. And then our current students, to my left, uh, Tristan Davis, next to Tristan is Taylor Ritchie, and next to Taylor is uh, Abigail Adams, and they are the questioners for today. So why don't we begin with a brief introduction from each of you. We'll start with Christina, and then you can take it away. Thank you all for joining us today. Hi everyone, um, my name is Christina Kaufman. I graduated last year, like Marie said. Um, I got a degree in communications with a concentration in creative advertising. Um, and I also got a double minor in business and in graphic design. Um, I am a junior designer currently at Sprague Nelson Advertising and I'm kind of the understudy for the lead creative director and managing partner of the firm. So I work directly under him and he is kind of like my mentor. So. Um, this is my first introductory job. Uh, my name's Natalie. I graduated last year with a degree in communications and concentrations in public relations and journalism. Um, I am currently the administration and fundraising assistant for the Ellie Fund, which is a nonprofit in Needham that specializes in breast cancer support services. So we help the patients directly with things like groceries, transportation to medical appointments, childcare, housekeeping, um, sort of the everyday stuff. And for the LA Fund, I've been doing um, fundraising outreach. I started a program called Students for Hope where we work with colleges and high schools and elementary schools. Um, I also do communication stuff like social media, uh, press releases, and um, sort of digital media things too. And I also help out with event support. Uh, we recently had our biggest gala of the year, um, and we raised over $300,000, so that was super exciting. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. 
Um, my name is Ashley Medeiros. I also graduated last year with a degree in communications. I currently do public relations at a little healthcare PR firm called Next Step Communications. There are about six of us, so I'm fortunate enough to do a little bit of everything. Um, I pitch, I do social media, I write documents, put together press releases, press kits, media kits, build relationships with media and clients. I've been fortunate enough to be able to travel a few times. Um, and yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Hi guys, uh, I'm Matt Arias, class of 2014. Uh, I graduated with a degree in communications, concentration sports communication. Uh, I'm currently at WBZ News Radio as a sales assistant. Uh, it's a really great job. Uh, me and the other assistant, we basically help the account executives or sales reps uh, with their work. We report to the sales managers and even the general manager of the whole CBS radio market. Um, we file expense reports, we send out commercial times, and we even get to voice spots every now and then. Um, it's basically office work, but you learn a lot, and I don't think there's been a single day where I haven't learned something, so it's a little bit about me. I'm Ariana St. Pierre. I graduated in 2014 with a uh, major in communications and a concentration in radio and video production with double minors in English and history. I'm a digital content producer at uh, WGME, CBS 13 News in Portland, Maine. Um, I've worked there since I graduated from LaSalle. It was my first job. I moved up the ranks a little bit there. Um, I'm in charge of all of our social media and um, web articles that go onto our website. I oversee our website. Um, I am also in charge of two other web producers. Um, it's just a constantly evolving and very busy job. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you. <coughs> Hi, uh, I'm Ryan McLeod. I graduated 2015 communication, uh, concentration of sports communication. I work for Gatehouse Media in um, Needham. I'm a sales support specialist there, which means that I'm working with the reps every day when they go out and they're uh, selling all the ads for both digital and print. It's a lot of order entry, but it's also, you know, learning the ropes. I've done, like, months of uh, trainings and all kinds of stuff just to work my way up and become a sales rep someday. Hey, everyone. My name is Rihanna Robbins, and I graduated in 2015 as well, so not even a year ago. I work at Mount Catholic High School, which is an all-boys private High school, and I work in the admissions and advancement office. Do a little uh, social media, managing the website, some press releases, um, and a lot of recruiting. So communication is key, and all the tough questions can be directed to Natalie Kafori. <laughs> I want to. Th I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, my name is Abigail Adams, and uh, the three of us are members of the Journalism 2 class taken uh, here at LaSalle College. And this year, we as a class were actually allowed to create the questions for this panel. Um, so uh, we were under the direct supervision of Marie Franklin, who uh, helped us edit any uh, small uh, tweaks in our questions. Um, some of them will be general, some of them might uh, be directed towards one or two of the panelists. Uh, but um, we'll try and uh, on as quick as possible to keep uh, the panel moving along. So let's start with the first question. Um, media ethics is a class required of all communication majors before their graduation. Now that you're out in the working world, tell us, have you ever faced an ethical dilemma while on the job? In advertising, you know, we, we want to advertise pretty much everybody uh, who comes in because any money is good money. But there are certain regulations that we have to face, and one of them that's not, that we don't really have to face, but is ethically challenging is uh, medical marijuana dispensaries, if we're going to run those in the newspaper. So uh, it comes from above, but we have to talk about it as like um, the entire team during like our Wednesday sales meetings on whether or not we're going to run uh, dispensaries for medical marijuana. Um, dealing with healthcare PR, I do a lot of healthcare tech, but at the same time, there's a pharmaceutical aspect to it. And in pharmaceuticals, I face ethical dilemmas pretty much every day. Um, right now, we have a story that we're running with, and it's entirely based on the heroin epidemic. And um, we really have to kind of 
uh, it even just hurts to say, <laughs> we capitalize on the heroin epidemic right now to pitch our stories and get coverage for a few of our clients. Um, so more often than not, we have to be very careful about our wording and how we're going to go about this story. So I would definitely say that I've actually cited Marie Franklin a few times when I've had to think my way through, like, okay, how am I going to present this in a way that's not making me feel like a terrible human being for using someone's, you know, <sighs> using someone's heroin um, or opioid addiction to my client's advantage. So yeah, definitely a lot of ethical dilemmas in pharmaceuticals. My job is very different from a lot of the other communications graduates. Um, I deal with design every day. I deal um, with, we have a um, medical client um, and we also have a bank. Um, so I didn't really, when I was in college designing, I didn't know all the restrictions that go into advertising and doing print materials for banks and for healthcare um, clients. You know, your compliance type has to be a certain um, font size or else that is not technically legal. Um, so I've been learning a lot. Um, you have to make sure all the pictures that you use, you're using legally um, for whoever owns the photos. So there's a lot of back work into doing print materials for advertising, and that's something that I've kind of learned, um, whether it's the font size or who owns the photos that you are using. All right, so I think I'll be handling the fun questions this evening, which will be really good, nice change of pace. Um, some of you guys are one or two years out of college now. What do you say you miss most? You had to pinpoint one thing about being able to sell. Um, I think I miss most of all um, getting outside and walking around and seeing people. Um, unfortunately, my office is in this horrible building and my area of office is like a troll cave. I don't have windows. I, I have this like stick on the wall decal of a tree that I look at sometimes, but I, <laughs> so I feel like a mole a lot of the times and I really wish, I, I miss walking around and bumping into people and saying hi, even if it's for like three seconds. Um, and then just seeing people every day and having really good relationships with your professors was also pretty cool, but going outside is a big one. I would definitely have to agree with that. When you walk into work in the morning and it's like 75, it's probably the worst feeling to sit at a desk for eight hours, um, but that's something you're just gonna have to deal with. Um, depending on what kind of, you know, depending on what kind of job that you get, you don't pick your coworkers. You don't pick who you hang out or you have lunch with. So, you know, those people could be close in your age or they could not. So I work in a company with three other people who are 50 years older than I am. So that's also pretty difficult. Like, I pretty much miss being around, like, my peers and kind of that stuff. Um, kind of to piggyback on both of their points, I miss the free time between classes. So, you know, you go to work in the morning and you know that's where you're stuck for the day. There is very little escape unless, like, you're going to go somewhere to get lunch, which I capitalize on daily. I spend so much money on lunches just to get out of the office for, like, 10 minutes a day. It's actually really sad. So my advice to all of you is utilize that time that you have between classes to be, like, an active part of the community because you'll never get that back. Well, she kind of took mine and put it in a better way than I could ever put it, but uh, I was going to say, aside from my peers, uh, the free time, because um, I have a hour commute usually every morning and then coming back with the traffic, I commute from Danvers to Boston. Um, so I usually have, um, I try to be active and go to the gym after work because there's no chance of me waking up before work and doing it. So I usually have like 11 to 12 hour days and a lot of the time I come home just so tired and like sometimes all my friends are going out and I like I really have to fight with myself and just get up and go. Um, but I, I do miss all the free time and I'm not even pretending that I used it productively when I had it here because I usually didn't but uh, it was just nice to have it be able to sit and do nothing more than I do now but um, you learn to manage it. I have to agree with Matt on that. Um, I work 6 a.m. to 2.30 and I have about an hour commute myself, and I have to get up at 3.30 in the morning. Um, 
Oh, it's fun, let me tell you. <laughs> but, and that's what I meant, I'm just sleeping in. That was a good, and I have to be in bed by eight, like a 90 year old woman. But, <laughs> so definitely enjoy the time that you have here. It's, we're, entering the workforce is a great thing as well, but enjoy the time you have. I have to stay at my desk to eat my lunch because I'm so busy. I heat up my lunch and I come back. So you get to leave, I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> but just enjoy the time that you have. And entering the workforce is a great thing and I am so thankful that I'm out of school and at the same time I miss it. It's just, enjoy it, <laughs> that's all I can say. Thank you so much. Um, we have to move on to the next question. Um, so as you know, all the cell students are required to take an internship. So whether you um, got a job from that or not, um, what helped you prepare for your current job during your internship? Uh, I actually had four internships during my undergraduate years here. And where I work now was my last internship. My last semester, I was thinking I really want to have an internship that's in the sports world, whether it be professionally, behind the stage, in front of the stage, in the high school level, collegiate level, anywhere. And I went to the sports management fair here, and I met the athletic director from my school there, and I told him kind of what I wanted to do for an internship. He said, come on board, we can do that. And I joined, loved working in the school, and then a position opened in the Advancement Admissions Office, and I applied for it and got it. And really it is who you know and making those connections. So when you are at your internships, or even your jobs, if you, I know for me personally, I worked at a part-time at a gym, Boston Sports Club. I was help, saying hello to every single member, not because it was my job description, but you never know who's walking in. Like Jerry Remy's wife worked out at the gym I worked at. I would always say hello to her, but I never said, hey, can I meet your husband? Because I never had the courage to do that, but I knew who she was. She was a very nice lady, so say hello to everyone. The best advice I got as a freshman here at LaSalle was a senior coming back, talking as an alum, saying never leave a room without everyone knowing your name, and I still live by that every day. So I got my job from my last internship at LaSalle too. I had uh, two internships and a bunch of part-time jobs while here. Um, and at my last internship at a PR agency, I got along really well with one of my supervisors. And I wasn't on the LA Fund account because they were clients at the time. But one day he came over to my desk and like very sneakily slipped me a piece of paper. And I was like, what is this? And it was the job description. He said, apply and I'll put in a good word. So. I applied to that and he sent a nice little email to the contact there and next thing I know I was on my second interview and a couple days later I got the job. So make sure you have a, make a good impression and even if, if your internship is really kind of lame and you don't really love it as much as you wish you would, have a good attitude. Go into every day like what can I do to help and seem eager and seem happy to be there and just try to make those good connections because you'll never know, even if it's a bad internship, it could turn into a good opportunity. Um, I have also had four internships while at LaSalle, and my last one I did my entire senior year, both semesters. Um, I was really looking for them to hire me after graduation, however they didn't because I didn't have enough experience. Um, they kind of indirectly promised me a full-time um, position after I completed the summer as well. Um, and that was really devastating and that might happen to you. And I ended up no longer going um, to the internship. I completed it and I started my job search. Um, however, one of the people that I made a connection with and who was my mentor at the internship um, gave me her recruiter information and she introduced me to her recruiter. And I got a job two weeks later because of the connection that I had in my internship because she knew a recruiter in the area. So even if you hate it, and even if you know they don't offer you the job that you really want after graduation, just think about it positively because someone might extend that to you, and that's that's really valuable. Here, we'll move on to the next question. Oh, unless you have something. Okay, can, can okay. um, do you believe LaSalle's connected learning approach uh, helped you more than a conventional approach at any other school? 
Oh my god, yes. <laughs> yes, like 10 times over. Um, honestly, if it wasn't for LaSalle College, I would not be where I am today in the slightest, which is part of why I'm here today. And I try to stay connected to the LaSalle community as much as possible. Um, that hands-on experience in having your professors so accessible and so willing to help you is not to overuse the word so, but it's so incredibly important. Um, I, you know, I kind of reached out to my teachers. I exhausted them, probably, sorry. <laughs> um, anytime that I had a question, I went from, I didn't go to my internship full time. I kind of explored my options, even though my internship did offer me a position, I was still kind of like, mm, I'm gonna look at like what else is out there, because I was curious. And had I not had the support of my professors, there is just no way that I would have made it. So I definitely would say that having that hands-on experience and getting the outside experience and having the professors there to help you along the way is something that I don't know anyone else that has had other than LaSalle students. And it's like exactly what got me to where I am now. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, LaSalle is definitely the reason I have my job today because my first internship that I had here at Magic 106.7 led to my next internship at the Sports Hub, which led to my job that I have now. And, um, you know, the internship classes themselves were also really helpful, I thought. Um, Professor Burroughs was really helpful. Um, so many great resources that just, like, you need to take advantage of them because the payoff, it's, it's real, it's awesome. And just being out there and seeing what the real world is like, like, you can't obviously get any better experience, so. Yeah, um, I think one of the things that a lot of people who go to LaSalle take for granted is how small of a school it is and how intimate the relationships are between you and your professors. Um, I went to a school before here that had almost 50,000 students and I was just a number there. So coming to LaSalle is just so eye-opening and it's such an experience to, you know, uh, know your professors and, you know, talk to them every day and then once you leave to, you know, be friends with them on Facebook and be, have, be able to reach out to them and then uh, just the, the time that you have with your professors and you know the way they push you to get your internships and, and work through school and then after school is, is something that's really important I think it makes LaSalle special. Awesome so earlier you guys made being an adult sound a little bit terrifying I'm not gonna lie um, so I guess I'd like to follow that last question up with of all the things you get to do with your job during the day what is your absolute favorite like what do you really look forward to when you go into work every day? Heard. For me, it's working with students. I work at the high school level, like I said before, and it's all boys, which I don't know if you guys realize at LaSalle, there's a majority of females here. So to go there where it's all boys and I was the only female, actually one of two under the age of 30 in the building, it was a big adjustment, but it's so much fun working with students. It's a new experience every day. You can talk to your professors, they'll probably say the same, that you never know what to expect walking in when you're working in education. The biggest thing that I love about my job is we're in a newsroom and there's just, it's desks everywhere and everyone is in each other's business and things like that, we're like a family and we are there, you know, sometimes 16 hour days. If it's an election night, we're there for 24 hours. We do not leave. If it sweeps, we're there longer than I care to be sometimes. But the point is that we're there and we're together and it's something that's really nice and we're all friends and we get along and sometimes we get on each other's nerves, it's just one big family, constantly, so. Um, my favorite part of my job is actually my job. I love what I do. I chose PR as a career. I'm very fortunate to have a job within my degree and within my career path. Um, everything from like chasing a reporter for three months to get a story written to coming up with different story ideas and using my creativity to tell a client's story to just handling social media and queuing up tweets and looking at the analytics to kind of figure out the, behave, uh, the consumer behavior. I love every single little detail of my job. So I'm very lucky and I will say that, you know, it's not work if you do what you love. It definitely still feels like work compared to school because it's only been 10 months, but I would not trade these experiences that I've had and the things that I get to do on a day-to-day -day basis for anything else. I have to agree with Ashley. Uh, I love my job. I think it's, I'm really fortunate to be 
in a job right now that I absolutely adore and I don't want to leave right after college. I interned at a nonprofit my junior year and I really liked it. I was doing a lot of the same stuff that I do now, um, but I never really thought that it was a career possibility and here I am. I love the people I work with. Um, I get to talk to patients on the phone and like sometimes in emails and I get letters from them and it's it's it makes you cry and it's so nice and it's you it's hard some days definitely um, you know with the event a couple weeks ago I was working all day and all night and I was really tired but it's for a good reason and it just makes me happy every day you know maybe not all day but most of the day I'm pretty happy and it's just a good vibe in the office and we have a good time so. Um, definitely good work-life balance is also important, I'd say. So, um, every Comm Day, students have the chance to participate in speed networking with communication professionals. Um, what's your best networking advice, and did you use um, a connection to get your job, or um, which, did your resume and work history play a more part in that? Um, I have kind of a Kind of an interesting story, actually. At Calm Day last year, the keynote speaker was Larry Weber from Race Point Global. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, Race Point Global is an international PR agency. Um, I kind of took the time after he spoke to go up to him, shake his hand, tell him how grateful I was that he took the time to be here because, you know, PR is a crazy, crazy, crazy profession and you never know what's gonna happen or when you're gonna be needed. Um, and I got his business card, and I immediately followed up, I mean, before night fell that day. I sent him an email just thanking him again for taking the time to come and speak with us, this, that, and the other thing. I really enjoyed your speech and the insight that you provided. And he wrote me right back, and he said, would you like to interview for an internship position? And I said, well, yeah, why not? Um, it was a paid internship position. So I interviewed, and um, they ended up going with somebody who was a, um, would have been unpaid going for credit that wasn't looking for as permanent of a job as I was. But now, I mean, it, almost a year to the day later, I reconnected with Race Point Global, and I got a job offer for a step up from the position that I'm in now. I have yet to give them an answer. I'm still considering it. Um, but I kind of, you know, you never know when you can really capitalize on those. And I mean, you know, a year later, I wrote and I saw that they had an account coordinator position open up. I sent an email. I kept the business cards of the two girls that I interviewed with for the internship last year. I sent my resume through um, indeed.com because I saw that's where I saw the position open up. Less than a week later, I followed up. I let the two girls that I interviewed with before know that I just put my resume in for um, an account position that just opened up. They wrote me back, do you want to come interview early next week? Sure thing. So I moved on from the first round. Um, I really just kind of, I'm very passionate about my job, so it's easy for me to show that in interviews, and I'm a very verbal, vocal, loud person. So. Um, just really like connecting and showing my excitement to be in that position and have that chance again to get in front of Race Point. And I went on to the second interview and now here I am considering a job offer that's a step up from where I am now, better benefits in an international PR company. So you never know. I mean, it may not happen right away. You fail if you don't try. So it definitely paid off, you know, in the long run. You, it might not happen, like I said, you know, next week you might not have a job offer, but you can definitely stay in contact and capitalize on those experiences that you do have because you never know when they'll pay off and you can connect again. Uh, do any of you guys uh, believe that your LaSalle experience uh, properly prepared you for your actual career? For me, definitely not only the courses, but the clubs offered, the newspaper at 1851 Chronicle and the Cell College Radio, being, being involved in both of those definitely helps because you might think it's small things you learn there, but it's just even the terms used when you're in the radio club or in the newspaper and also knowing the proper way of using is it PM with periods in between? Is it capital PM? Is it capital AM? And knowing that is very important because 
even in our social media, I'm sure they'll agree, you still want to have, in the communication world, still have proper grammar and spelling. You don't want to say, what's up happening in, in the election tonight? You don't really want to say that. It's not quite proper. So just learning the things through the clubs and the guidance from the professors here has really helped. I agree with what Bree said. I think that as awesome as the classes were, and I think I gained a lot in um, some of my communications courses with Marie, and then some of my PR um, classes, and even some English classes with writing especially, but um, I'd say the, the club experience was really what kind of solidified the skills that I use every day. Um, the leadership from 1851 and organization needed for that role. Um, sort of, you have a lot of tasks thrown at you, as I do, um, because I juggle between like three different departments in my job, so being able to organize my time and organize my energy and sort of get everything in line, what do I need to focus on for this versus that, um, is really important. Um, I think also um, being confident, I think is a big one. I think from 1851 I had to, sort of step up and be a sort of leader from my sophomore year. Um, so having that confidence helps me in the job area because I'm not really afraid to speak up and give ideas and that's how I kind of got the new program going that I'm running. So um, it's pretty exciting and I definitely have my experiences um, with the Chronicle, I think, to thank for that. So for four years at school, you guys were probably constantly asked what you want to do with the rest of your life. And now that you're at the rest of your life, sort of, and you're postgraduates with all really exciting jobs, is there a different answer to that question? Do you see yourself doing something else or moving up where you're at now? What's, what's the plan with all that? I think during the day at my job, I question what I want to do like a hundred times. I have a lot, like, I don't have a lot of free time, but during lunch, I like, I, I daydream about what other things that I would like to do, what other interests I might have outside of my major. And while your major is great, and I got a really valid degree in communications, and I can use that, I am, you develop other interests after you graduate college. You're not just going to be stuck in your little major. So I think um, a lot of my interests have developed after college. You know, you have that longing to learn after you're not going to classes anymore. So. I've developed those and you know it's up to you after graduation to do what you want with them and if you're gonna you know be, have an initiative beyond your job or you want to take that into your career so um, for me um, I love photography and I can really see myself um, looking past my design career and seriously consider um, blogging and photography and the, that kind of interest. Uh, I think it's important to not worry too much about the future and kind of just enjoy where you're at. Um, if you spend too much time, like, you, you might like the job you're at, like, at first, like, I like my job. I don't want to be in radio sales, but I think I'd like to be in radio maybe on air someday. But, like, I knew this would be a good start, but I tried to remind myself, too, that, you know, if I were to develop another interest, I mean, I wouldn't be afraid to go for it. Um, don't feel trapped in your major, um, like previously said, and just try not to stretch yourself out too much because, I mean, things do work themselves out, and if you keep working hard and, you know, don't limit yourself, then you'll be able to move on to something else if you want. I think that communications is such a broad field. I mean, up here on stage we have people who work for PR agencies, to high schools, to working for the radio, that um, I know personally what I want to do is I don't want to be in sales. I want to work in sports. But you know, the first job that you get out of college is probably not going to be your favorite job. And you probably will daydream for when five o'clock comes and go home. But um, at the same time, you really, you really have to take every minute that you're learning and just think about how it's going to work for you in the future. Um, I've learned so much in the six months that I've been in my position, and um, I feel like from what I've learned and then what I'm going to continue to learn, I'll be able to apply that to a different aspect of the communication field that I want to go into in the future.
I know for me, if you would have said a year ago, when I was in your seat, say, you're gonna work at an all-boys Catholic high school, I would have laughed in your face, because I didn't even think that existed. You never know, you need to keep your options open. When I was here, I know I wanted to be in front of the camera, working for a sports broadcasting network in Miami, Florida, no one said anything different to me. That's what I'm doing, that's what my mindset on. Will I eventually do that one day? Maybe, I don't know. I'm very happy working in education, so keep your options open. So thankfully, we're all juniors, so we still have a little bit of time to go, but what advice do you wish someone had given you your senior year to help better prepare you for the real world? It is never too early to start looking for a job. <laughs> um, I thought that I was looking early when it was um, December and you know the start of the second semester and then I spent all summer looking for a job after I graduated. It took me three months to find a job and I mean if you're lucky enough to have a job as, as soon as you graduate college that's awesome. But there are a lot of people in this room who are going to move home and they're going to look for a job at home because it's just so difficult. Uh, it's, the job market's getting better, but it's never a good time because it's, it's so difficult to apply for an entry-level job when they want one to three years of experience. You just never know exactly how much experience you have, um, if that's going to translate to what they want. So just start looking as early as you can because if you think you're looking too early, you're not. I agree 100% with what Ryan said, and also follow up. I know in my internship class with Sarah Burroughs that we talked about sending those email follow-ups and after your interview, sending mail. I don't know if you guys know what mail is. You put a stamp in the right corner and send that. Say a little thank you note. Thank you for taking the time in the interview. Try to personalize it. If there was something, if there's four people in that interview and you and one of the, one of the individuals had a particular conversation, mention that, be like, I was so great to hear about that event that you had last fall. I would love to be a part of that team next year. So honestly, follow up, follow up. You need to stand out from the crowd. Um, I think it's important to, even before you start job searching, um, do some research. Look around for companies that you might be interested in working with. Um, make an Excel sheet uh, with their name, maybe find a contact person on LinkedIn, maybe reach out, see if they want to grab coffee just so you can have an informational interview. I went on a few of those my junior and senior year and even though it didn't lead to a job, it, one of them led to my internship which led to a job. So um, reach out to people just so you can even find out more about the different fields and look outside of maybe your specific major. If you're in PR, maybe look at places that need that sort of in-house person, but it's not necessarily an agency. Um, come up with a list of different ideas and um, don't stress yourself out. Do things gradually, look at one task at a time. Don't freak out if all your friends are getting job offers and you're still doing your reach outs. Everything happens at your own pace and it's important to take care of yourself during this time and not go crazy. Um, which, have fun, your senior year. Uh, it's your last year, I think. A lot of us on this panel really enjoyed our senior year and we had an awesome time and we're all still pretty close because of that. Um, so really enjoy yourselves and don't let the next year stress yourself out too much so that you're not having fun and taking advantage of the last year with your really good friends. Um, kind of to play on that as well. I wish somebody told me to stay calm <laughs> and positive at the same time. Um, I'm a very positive person anyway, but there were a lot of times throughout the second half of my senior year where I would like, perchance, run into Dr. Vicente's office and be like, oh my God, I don't know what's happening. I'm not hearing back from anybody. I've sent out so many this is awful and I would just throw myself for a complete crazy madness loop don't do that um, I think everything one of the best pieces of advice I was ever given was actually from my uncle at a family cookout and he was like you know what Ash you're gonna be okay he's like no matter what you do he's like in the end you're gonna be all right and I kind of keep that in my back pocket it was like the strangest it was such a strange piece of advice and it was so random um, but 
he was right, and I'm finding more and more that he's right. Like, if you stay calm, just know that you're gonna be okay. In the end, you'll find something. When it's right, it's gonna be right, and if you're not getting the first, second, third choices, then that's always something that you can come back to when you have more experience. For instance, I wanna be VP of Media Relations for the Celtics. Dream big, right? So right now I'm working in healthcare PR, but I'm still getting the skills that I need to do PR. I'm learning invaluable things. The experience that I'm having is really helping me grow. Did I try to get into the Celtics when I graduated? Yes. But at the same time, when you think about it, once you want to, you don't want to do your dream job right off the bat. You want to perfect your craft. You want to build and you want to grow and you want to really strive and excel once you get to that point that you're in your dream position because you want to bring the best of yourself that you have. Um, so definitely stay calm, don't panic, stay positive, and like my uncle said, you're going to be okay. <laughs> if you could go back in time and be a LaSalle student again, uh, would you follow the same career path or seek a different one? I definitely wouldn't change it. That's just me personally. I knew that I wanted to work at a TV station when I graduated from LaSalle. I had a concentration in radio and video production, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm working at a TV station, and I love it. Not every day do I love it, but it's what I want to do, and I'm happy that I do it. Um, it's definitely an experience, that's for sure. Um, but. We're owned by Sinclair Broadcast Group, so will I stay at WGME forever? No, but I would like to move up within the ranks there in a television perspective. I know that I wouldn't um, change my career path. While I might not be in the, the job that I wanna have my career in, I know that I wanna have my career in the communications field, but one thing that I wish I had done when I was at LaSalle is I wish I had interned more. I only had one internship, and that internship didn't turn into a job, and when I applied for a job there, it didn't even turn into a follow back. So I think just interning more. Uh, you hear, there's a couple people on stage who interned four times, uh, and their internships both turned into jobs. So I think that um, if I could do it over again, I would intern more. So throughout your four years here at LaSalle, you guys met a lot of people, obviously, students, professors. Do you find yourself keeping in contact with any of those people to use them as connections or just a shoulder to cry on if you're not doing so well? Do you room with any of them? How, how often do you keep in touch with people that you met at LaSalle? I'm gonna hawk the mic. Um, my, my job at Gatehouse Media um, was through Sarah Roberts who was on this panel last year. Um, I worked with her as an RA um, and, and we remained close. And then when I graduated, she reached out to me um, and she sent me over a job listing and she said, hey, look at some of this stuff and apply. And um, she was the assistant to the president of the company at the time, so she put my resume on his desk, which definitely got me the job. And I, I got in, I interviewed once, and I interviewed again, and they offered me the job on the spot at the second interview. So uh, the people that you know at Little will help you. It's almost not what you know, but who you know now. So that's really important. LinkedIn can be your best friend. Anywhere you go, if any of you are looking to study abroad, get one before you even go abroad, and those connections you make there, add them on LinkedIn. When you go to an internship and the other intern that's there, add them. Maybe they're a student at Northeastern, add them. You never know. Keep those connections going. And if you have a good relationship with your professors here, ask them if you can be their friend on Facebook or LinkedIn. They'll tell you their preference. Like maybe they only want to be friends on LinkedIn, don't be offended. It is a great professional social media device. Use it smart, though. I'm fortunate enough to have stayed close with a lot of the people that I was close with at LaSalle. I room with Christina now, um, and that kind of happened all of a sudden, but it's been really great. Um, so we support each other and I support current students here and alumni and faculty and um, it's nice to reach out to them for the professional connections but also now that we've graduated to get to know them as people and to sort of enjoy talking to them and your conversations um, and that sort of relationship as well. Um, so I, I think it's really important 
especially when a lot of people, when they graduate from college, they really miss their friends there and the, the feeling of walking around, talking to people. Well, if you're friends with them in college, you can be friends with them after college, you know, just text them, reach out, hang out, and you can keep that friendship going pretty easily. So Ryan, I hope you reciprocate and help some of other LaSalle students get jobs. Um, have any of you considered continuing your education, um, going to grad school, getting your master's, PhD? Definitely, my, um, the company that owns the station in Portland um, will actually pay for my master's degree, and so that is something that I am looking at right now. Um, and it's, I don't necessarily know if it will help me professionally, but just for my own personal goals, it's something that I really want to do and have a master's degree, so. Yeah, I definitely want to further my education, but I need to find a company that um, will help me at least somewhat financially because I spent way too much money to go to school so far and I don't want to spend a ton more to continue my education. Um, I'm definitely considering it. it. I'm not sure exactly what area because there's a lot of things that interest me. So once I kind of pinpoint that one thing, I'm definitely considering graduate school. Um, for me personally, I just want to further my learning. Not that I'm not learning at my job now. You learn every day. But I just kind of miss being in the classroom, which might sound crazy because when I was in that seat, I would have not said that. But I do just miss learning and definitely want to continue my education. Um, I actually don't want to continue my education. I see the value in like getting a master's. I think if I were to want to start my own company or do something like really crazy and different, then I could definitely see value in going to get my master's. Um, but at this point, I feel like with public relations, it's so hands-on and you learn as you go that I'm learning so much from my career that that's really where my focus is. Um, Right now, I you know I just I do so much, and there's only like six people in my company, so I work directly with the CEO, and um, we call her the chief people officer, but she's kind of just with she's on the same level as the CEO, and I feel like I'm learning so much from those people and my peers, and that's how I want to continue learning because I am a very hands-on learner. As much as I miss writing papers, which is strange, I really miss writing papers. I miss writing profile pieces. <laughs> specifically for journalism class, I miss having the ability to write profile pieces. Um, as much as I miss that, I kind of see the value in, in, as far as my career is concerned, in learning more from my peers and those above me and just continuing on growing. I read a lot of books around PR, um, not like textbooks, but like if you want to cry, go outside and other things that your mother didn't tell you. Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, so I read a lot of books of those. That book in particular changed my life. Thank you, Dr. Vicente. Um, and yeah, I just that's kind of just how I learn, and I don't really see the point in me personally going back to school. Maybe someday that'll be different, but right now I'm just loving what I'm doing, and I'm learning from those around me, so. Um, were there any clubs uh, on campus or on campus activities that helped advance your studies and or your Uh, for me, it would be LaSalle College Radio. Um, it's still on my resume. I brought it up in every single interview I've been in. Um, you know, just having that basis of, you know, what it's like to have a, a radio show, work the board, um, you know, work with station manager and, you know, Professor Wardiga. Um, that was a great experience, especially since I'm in radio and want to be in radio. Um, so, yeah, I would say LCR, and I know you guys are on FM now, and I knew it was going to keep growing and growing, so I'm very proud to say I'm an LCR alum. Um, being the art director of um, the 1851 Chronicle, it was a very different role than my other editors. Um, I used the skills that I used in 1851 every day at my job. Um, I am using all of the tools in Adobe InDesign and Adobe Photoshop, and I, the job, both of the jobs were, are so similar. Um, so putting in those six hour nights doing the newspaper layout, shout out, um, 
really paid off. And now looking back on it, I'm like, how did I go to classes for eight hours a day, go to work, and then I have to go to layout at 8 p.m. until 1 a.m.? Um, so that trained me, and now leaving work at 5 or 5.30 is a piece of cake. Um, and it teaches you how to work with deadlines. It teaches you, I'm a designer, but I learned writing skills. I learned copy editing skills, which now I use at my job, because where there's four people, so I kind of double as a copy editor. So you're wearing multiple hats, the newspaper is small, my job is in a small environment, so I cannot say how similar my 1851 experience is to my job. Um, so if you're really looking for something, I talk to Marie. So at what point in your life did it feel like you had officially reached adulthood? Was it post high school, <laughs> post college, or do you still feel like you're not fully an adult quite yet? On the weekends, I don't feel like an adult, but during the week I do. Um, I think adult, adulting hit me um, when I paid my first rent. <laughs> like no one kind of tells you about that. Like you have to pay last month's rent, first month's rent, and a security deposit wherever you move in. And that was a lot. So. That was, that was really, that was tough. Um, so, and then also coming back from work every day at five, you're like, wow, you get into like a routine and then you kind of feel, there's some nights you feel lame, but that kind of hit me. I agree, I think moving into my apartment, uh, buying a new car, um, figuring out insurance, making your own doctors and dentist appointments is like really weird. <laughs> and just making sure that like, I mean, I was doing my taxes the other night, and I was like calling my dad and freaking out, and just like, I can't do this, you need to do this, and just, um, just all these things that you don't, well, some people do their taxes when they're in college, but um, all these things that all of a sudden you have to do on your own, uh, making dinner every night, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> there's no calf, there's no nugget night. Um, it's all... But I mean, it's all good. I mean, I, I love where I live and I love, um, you know, I don't love paying my car payments, but um, <laughs> it's scary. It is scary when you write those big checks. That's probably when I feel most like an adult when I'm writing my rent check. I know the exact moment where I was like, I'm an adult. It was when I scheduled auto payments on my college loans. I was like, look at this. I have like money coming into my account. I can actually rely on Sally Mae to take this money out of my account automatically every day and not even break, um, every month, and not even break a sweat. And that's the moment where I texted my mom and I was like, you know what, mother? I got this. No need for you anymore. I love you. I'll be home on the weekends, but this adult thing, I got it. So going off of that, um, are student loans as crippling as they seem to be, and how are you dealing with the burden? Um, I'll hug the mic. Not, no, I would say no. Um, of course, you know, you're gonna pay them for however long, but there are enough options out there with consolidating and, oh my God, all that other stuff that you have to get calls about and talk to people about. Um, you know, they do work with you, as much as I like to say, Aunt Sally is the devil. She does, um, sorry, I speak about Sally May like she's my aunt. Um, Sally Mae and Navian, they are willing to work with you to make sure that you are able to pay those loans and there are so many options out there aside from those two companies that, um, you know, I don't really personally see them as, as big of a burden as I thought they would be. I think it really depends on the situation that you put yourself in. Um, you know, me becoming an adult, it felt like when I got my first credit card and had for the first month. But you know, you put yourself into a situation, you know how much money you're making, you know how much money you're gonna have coming in every month, and you know what your rent is gonna be, and your student payments, and your car payments. So you know how much of a buffer you have, and you know how much you wanna save. So student loans will cripple you if you go out and you blow a ton of money at the bar, because then you just don't have the money to pay your student loans. But you know, if you moderate, and you know you're, you're smart on what you buy for groceries, or you know, you know, staying in or, you know, cutting back just into other places, that's when student loans really don't cripple you. 
So, Alum, you're not finished yet, because we're going to open it up for questions. But uh, how about a nice shout out for these Journalism 2 students? Once again, I'd like to thank Kristen, um, Taylor, and Abby for such good questions and for a wonderful presentation today. So now we'd like to open it up to questions from current students and faculty, and let's see the first hand up. But I do have a few questions. Um, but the first question is, did you um, seek out a mentor in your current job position or uh, was someone assigned to you? Because we've been talking a lot in my current courses, professional communication and field experience about mentorship and what that means and how it's really a two-way relationship that the person actually needs to know that they're your mentor. And so if you have a mentor, how did you go about um, um, I, I have a job where it's me and one other person, and she had been with the company for over a year. So um, I was introduced to her my very first day, and my, my desk is like right across um, from hers. And uh, I spent a lot of time with her for the first couple of weeks training um, and learning stuff. And even to this day, um, I have questions, and I'll just ask her, and she'll be like, how do you not know this still? I've, to I've told you this four or five times, but it's just, um, she's been a great mentor for me, just, um, and just because she's been with the company and she knows so much. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, I definitely have a, well, he left the company, unfortunately, to my dismay, um, but the very first day that I walked in there, he was the first person that I met and he was very helpful and very patient with me and showed me everything that I needed to know about my job and how to grow in it. And when he left, it was like a little hole. <laughs> but I'm still in contact with him and every once in a while when a question comes up um, regarding something that's happening at the station or a system, something like that, I'll reach out to him. And he is more than happy to give me a hand and it's just, I'm so thankful that he was there. Um, so definitely, I think mentors are important, and I would, if you have the option to have one and meet someone, they are just a wonderful thing. Um, I actually sought mine out while I was still at LaSalle. Um, Nikki Diodario, you may know her, she is an internship professor. Um, she works in PR as it is, she works in-house at Kronos, and I stayed in contact with her just through like the PR connection and then was asking her about different companies that she was familiar with in PR and all of that stuff. And it's kind of blossomed into this really great relationship since, completely unexpected, um, even just the past few weeks. 
anytime I'm kind of like trying to think of something or I'm having a little trouble, I can reach out to her and sh I know that she'll always get back to me pretty much right away. Um, so while my mentor is not at the same company, she's within the same career and she knows a lot about the PR space and she knows a lot about, you know, talking about money when you're looking for new jobs, things like that. Um, and even like little tasks that I have to do at work, sometimes I'll just run a blog by her or I'll run um, like a white paper or something else, PR documentation around her and just be like, you know, what are your first instincts of this? And that kind of plays on like developing relationships at LaSalle as well. Um, so yeah, I definitely appreciate that she takes the time to talk to, about, talk to me about these things and having her there is always such a relief because I know that she'll have very educated insight in specifically in the field that I'm in. Real quick, I work in an off. I'm one of five people in my office, so I'm very lucky where I work with everyone, and they're all kind of my mentors. But um, one in particular, she's our development director, and I've kind of been steering myself more towards her because that's kind of where I want to go with my career more than patient services or bookkeeping or anything like that. Um, so with her, I think a couple months in, I had been kind of shadowing her to an extent, but. I asked her if she wouldn't mind grabbing a drink with me after work one day a week, and if you're 21 and up, and if it seems appropriate, um, it was awesome. We grabbed a drink, a couple appetizers, and we talked for at least over an hour just sort of about everything, not only professionally, but personal life, and you know how we got to where we're at now, and um, it was really helpful, and since then we've gone out a few other times, and it's just nice to sort of have that personal base um, to sort of build the professional off. Uh, so that's been really helpful and um, don't ever be scared to ask if they want to hang out or if they want to chat or if you have questions going up to them and asking for a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if they're too busy, they're not going to be rude um, or they shouldn't be. So um, definitely don't be afraid to make that first step. You've entered a workplace that's diverse more so than any other in, maybe in history not just uh, culturally and ethnically, but age. This is probably the first, uh, t this decade or this century, where you could have people who were pre-boomers, boomers, your generation, and a lot of different generations together. That doesn't, hasn't happened before. How do you deal with your coworkers who may be your parents' age or older? Have you found um, relating to them different? I can answer this question. Um, at my agency, I'm one of four, and the two managing partners are my father's age, so um, very big age difference. And this is my first job. Um, so I'm not gonna say it's not challenging, it's very challenging working with some two people who have been in the agency for 30 years, 20 to 30 years. Um, they are, you know, they have a set way of doing things. They own their ad agency. And you're coming in and you might have some new ideas, which are great, um, but it's also been very challenging to kind of be a chameleon and um, kind of mold yourself to them as well. So it's kind of like this balancing act of, you know, you wanna please your bosses, but you're also thinking with new ideas and new initiatives. and. So it's a very complicated balance. Um, I think it's great. They act as my mentors, as, I just, as we just talked about. Um, they have a lot of experience, and I'm thankful that they get to teach me that experience um, because they have been in the um, business for so long. Um, but it is very hard, um, since it is a small place, that the age difference is so large. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, I work with a lot of people who are 30, 40 years older. Um, I just always try to remember to just kind of be professional, be myself, um, just because there's a significant age difference. I mean, you know, it doesn't mean we can't, you know, have good conversation, you know, have good laughs, work together well. Um, so I just try and keep in mind that, you know, everyone's there for the same reason to uh, work and, you know, be good at their job. and. Uh, Obviously, you want a, a good work environment, and you can contribute to that by just being professional and just keeping in mind that everyone's there for the same reason. 
for me, we have Zavarian brothers that work at our school because we're a Catholic high school and most of the Zavarian brothers that work there have been working at the school as long as my parents have been alive, so that's a big age gap. And then my actual director is my mother's age. So for when it, those kind of things, is when you have these new ideas, like I came up with the idea of a Snapchat geofilter, my director had no idea what Snapchat was or geofilter. So you always have to be patient and it, it maybe explain some things that they don't know. You have to be in return, they're going to explain some things that you don't know. And when you bring new ideas and you get shut down because a lot of people are set in their ways, like, no, this is the way we've been doing it for 25 plus years, we're not doing anything new, you need to be patient and push that idea. Don't be too pushy, but if you think it's something that would be good for your company, your job, wherever you might end up, keep pushing it. For me, now we have two geo filters that I created, so push it. Do we have any more questions? Hello. Um, so Ashley, you mentioned that um, one piece of advice that your uncle gave you. I'm wondering if there's anybody else on the panel that has uh, one piece of advice that really stuck with them, resonated with them, and that they want to share with uh, the audience. I said earlier, I'll say it again. Casey Looney, class of 2012, said, never leave a room without everyone knowing your name. The end. I forget who told me this piece of advice, but if you're in a job position and your mentor or the person above you, if you look at them and you think, um, wow, I really want to have that job someday, you're in the right place. So I don't know who gave that to me or where I heard it, but that's kind of what I think. Like if I can see myself doing what people above me are doing, I know that I'm on the right track. And you know, you're gonna daydream and maybe like wonder about different opportunities, but that's a kind of good way to kind of calmly tell yourself that you know everything will be okay. And and if it's not what you want to do, then you know that you have to make a career change. So kind of a very simple way to do it. Any other questions? Okay, so I have a part-time job right now that I absolutely felt that I loved in the beginning, and I think I'm at this point now where I've sort of started to realize that I love it because of the aesthetic of it, not necessarily because the job actually has anything to do with what I want to do whatsoever. Um, it's more or less just where I work, not necessarily what I'm actually doing and who I'm meeting there at all. And I think I'm starting to have a problem with, like I guess my question is how do you broaden your mind to I mean, all of you have said this is what I wanted to do, and half of you work in what you said you wanted to when you graduated, yet some of you do not. And I think I'm having a problem opening my mind to other things. And I guess, like, what is your best advice to looking into what you want to go into, if, even if you don't know that that's what it is? I think it's really tricky because um, I was journalism and PR, and even though I love writing and journalism was a huge passion for me, I ended up not going into it because I didn't want to do the school board meetings, the town hall meetings. I wanted to do entertainment journalism and feature stories, and that was really hard for me to grasp, and I could have done it, but um, I think what I really did was I looked at these traits that I love doing, and I wrote down the qualities of the job, not necessarily the titles. So in journalism, I loved writing, I loved meeting people, I loved telling stories. Telling stories was a big one. So I wrote down all these traits that I really loved and you know the connections you make and maybe some digital photography, things like that. And I looked into jobs where they would list what you would be doing and if those kind of matched up, I knew it was going to be a good fit. So in my job, I tell patient stories all the time. Um, that's a big part of what we do is talking to patients and talking about how many kids they have and how, you know, they, they had nothing but condiments in the fridge to feed their kids and then all of a sudden, you know, we provided them with grocery gift cards so that they could buy their kids breakfast. Heartbreaking story, but I took that and with my journalism skills, we use that in all of our materials and it's just knowing how to frame the story. Um, so very important. So I would look at what you love doing, maybe not necessarily the title, but the qualities and the stuff that you do every day, 
and then find jobs where you're going to be doing something similar. And even when you're in an interview, if it's a professional or an informational, bring up some of those things. Be like, I really love telling stories, or I really love taking pictures and photography. Is there room for that in this position? And seeing what they say. And if they say, nope, you're going to be doing data entry all day, then maybe that's not the path that you're going to go down. Your interests are going to change. Um, that's just a guarantee. I was talking to uh, one of my coworkers last week, and we were talking about, like, is this what you want to do with your career? And he's a little older than me, and he said he, he was reading something, and it said that people our parents' age change their jobs about four times over their career, whereas people who are, you know, in their 20s and 30s, they're expected to change their job upwards of, like, 15 times. And your interests will change. Um, you know, you can be interested in something when you start the job, and six months later, you might realize that working in that job, you hate that, and your interests will change. And there's not a problem with changing your interests or changing your job. There's nothing, you're expected to, you know, switch your jobs. You know, you should probably stay for a little while. You don't want to be the person who bounces around from job to job. But you're expected to move on from stuff and have your interests change. So that's not a big deal to have your interests change. We have time for one more question. You were talking earlier about like changing your interest after um, after your schoolwork. Um, have you ever like changed your interest while you were a student here, like changing like what you wanted to be post grad? Um, I didn't come here immediately out of high school. I thought I wanted to be an engineer. Um, so I went to school for engineering, and then I realized that I really, really didn't want to spend my entire life uh, designing stuff and being an engineer. So um, I think that most call I think almost all college students change their major at one time or another. It's not a problem to change your major. Uh, at LaSalle, a lot of the classes are, are applicable to transfer over. So like from major to major, it's not a big deal. Um, and it's much better to you know change your major while you're at LaSalle than it is to you know, do something that you find out that you don't like while you're still here, and then go into that field and, and know that you don't like that, because then you're just gonna be miserable the entire time. Like I said before, I wanted to work in front of television, nothing different, that was probably my first two years here. And then my junior year, I said, you know what, I kinda would be the t-shirt guy, like at a Celtics game, or my heat game. I want to be the one that's thinking of all the marketing and community outreach at a professional basketball team. And now that I'm working in education, I'm thinking, I think I want to stay in education, maybe administrative position. So you never know, and like we've all said, your interests change. Um, I can especially speak to that. In my freshman and sophomore year, I jumped around to three different majors. So I started with communications, and then I was like, oh, fashion looks like fun, I'm gonna try that. And then I was like, oh, psychology sounds really interesting, so I'm gonna try that. And then eventually it just came full circle back to communications. Um, but at the same time, I started out wanting to be a journalist. And then eventually I started kind of dabbling in broadcast, sports broadcasting. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. I wanna be on TV forever. And then I saw myself on TV and I was like, no, I do not wanna be on TV forever, just kidding. Um, and then I kind of looked at behind the scenes, what's going on back there, and I was doing brand promotions while I was at LaSalle, and I was like, you know what, I really like talking to people, learning what they like about a brand, what attracts them to a sports team. Um, so that's kind of where the PR aspect came in, and then I took a PR class, and then I just went full throttle to PR from there. Um, so while I was, I'm fortunate to be in the position that I want to be in and that I love PR and all of that, it certainly, like, don't let me fool you, it was not easy getting here. Because um, I tried a ton of different things and dabbled in a lot of different things. Just kind of take on whatever you can. I did a lot of um, kind of one-off gigs, just, oh, you need help in the truck for a Red Sox game? Sure. Oh, you need help? I've done, I've even, like, gone to some baller country club near the common and served wine to people and you talk to people and you make connections that way and you know you learn through every experience you have as a learning process so definitely just take what you can from every experience and kind of figure out your way from there 
I'll say this quick. I know that we're beating a dead horse here with extracurriculars, but my junior year, I developed interests that I don't even know where they came from. I got involved with the Center for Community-Based Learning, and I went on two alternative spring break trips, and I know the question came up earlier, would you change your path? And there are gonna be things that might change your path. I really got involved with community service and social justice and things like that, and that kind of dictated my second half of my college career, but I couldn't really change my major then. So I dedicated myself to those um, extracurriculars that are specialty to your interests. So now if I go for a job interview in nonprofits, I have so many valid experiences here doing community service and nonprofit work. So you have to find the balance. If you're too late to change your major, you have to figure out how to make it work here. So <clears throat> I'd like to thank you all for joining us with the alum panel. I think it should be very obvious why each one of these uh, recent graduates was invited today. Those of you who are comm students now, just know we'll be calling on you in the future because we expect you to go out and do really great things. And from here, we're going to move over to Glow Lounge. We have a little reception for the alum. And uh, uh, I don't know if we have enough food to feed everyone, but you're certainly welcome to come and join us and say hello and do a little bit of networking. Thank you for coming today.